Yeah, so well, you have welcome everybody. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit more about chapter 11 and chapter 12. I'm very sorry that not everybody was able to make it to the last lecture. So this is a recap, more or less, what was going on in the last lecture. So in the first step, we were uh, reviewing what was going on in chapter 11. So in chapter 11, we used like a pure goods market model, um, where, which is called like the Keynesian cross. And we already discussed uh, some very important insights, for example, that the multiplier effect is present. And when the government increases government spending by one unit, GDP is up by more than one unit. So there is a multiplier effect. We also talked about the efficiency uh, of an expansionary fiscal policy in the form of an increase in government spending compared to a decrease in taxes. And we learned that um, uh, government spending is more uh, efficient uh, because of the fact that the multiplier in its absolute value is larger. Uh, based on this Keynesian cross model, we derived the IS curve. The IS curve is displayed in an interest rate income diagram and it has a negative slope. In the second part of chapter 11, we looked at the so-called theory of liquidity preference. We said the money market is in an equilibrium in case that uh, money demand is equal to money supply. And then we are able to determine one endogenous variable, which is like the interest rate. We also looked what happens if uh, the central bank is increasing money supply or what happens if GDP changes, then uh, in the end, the interest rate will change. We also used that model um, in order to derive the LM curve. And then we displayed the IS and the LM curve like in one uh, diagram. So like here we have like the IS curve downward sloping in like the interest rate output diagram. Uh, the LM curve is upward sloping. What is new in the ISLM model is that we can determine two endogenous variables at the very same time. And we are displaying these endogenous variables like at the two axes, so the interest rate is endogenous and the output is endogenous. Uh, this was not the case in uh, the first part of chapter 11. There we were only able to determine the output in isolation. And in the second part of chapter 11, we were only able to determine like the interest rate in isolation. But here we are able to determine the equilibrium level of income and the interest rate level simultaneously. And this is like the new aspect in this model. We already learned to some extent that, for example, uh, a fiscal policy will shift the IS curve like to the right. So in case that the government increases government spending, the IS curve shifts to the right. Furthermore, we also learned that a contractionary monetary policy, where the central bank is decreasing money supply, will lead to a shift of the LM curve, like either upwards, or we can also say that the LM curve shifts to the left. I would like to come up with a general rule, like when does an equilibrium curve shift? An equilibrium curve shifts in case that one variable changes, which is included in the equilibrium condition, but is not displayed on one of the two axes. So this kind of def definition will hold in each and every model. It will hold in microeconomics. It will help hold in macroeconomics. It will hold in finance. It will hold in all the models you'll get to know. Let's try to practice this. Uh, what happens if the government increases government spending? Like first, we could check whether the LM curve shifts, but there is no G included in this equation. And therefore, the general definition says an equilibrium curve shifts in case that one variable changes, which is included in the equilibrium condition. This is not the case. Therefore, the LM curve does not shift. But here is one G uh, in the IS equation. 
in case that g increases, then the right-hand side of the equation increases. So we ask the question, how has y to change so that the equal sign holds? y has to increase so that the equal sign holds, and therefore the IS curve shifts to the right. What about the uh, in case that the government, uh, that the central bank, decreases money supply, so a contractionary monetary policy? Does the IS curve shift? No, because M is not included in the IS equation. Therefore, the IS curve does not shift. What about the LM curve? Yes, M is included in the uh, LM uh, equation. Uh, it is uh, nominal money supply here. And now when we want to find out does the LM curve shift to the left or to the right, we have to check which variable is displayed on the horizontal axis. And this is like GDP. So we have to think about the connection between money supply and GDP. When the left-hand side of the equation decreases, then GDP also has to decrease so that the equal sign holds. And therefore, like the LM curve shifts to the left in case that the central bank performs a contractionary monetary policy. Here we talk about the horizontal shift, so to the left or to the right. In the next slide, I'm talking about the shift up or down, so the vertical shift. What happens if the central bank like decreases money supply? When it comes to the vertical shift, we have to check which variable is displayed on the vertical axis. It's the interest rate. Therefore, we have to check how has the interest rate to react so that the equal sign holds. When the left-hand side of the equation decreases, the interest rate has to increase so that the equal sign holds because there is a negative sign in front of D2. Therefore, the LM curve shift upwards in case that's a central bank like decreases money supply. On the next few slides, I have uh, listed like all the different cases which can pop up. So the IS curve shifts to the right in case that the government increases government spending, in case that the consumers are increasing the autonomous component of consumption, or in case that the managers are increasing the autonomous component of investment. Furthermore, the IS curve shifts to the right in case that the government lowers the taxes. So uh, the IS curve like shifts to the right in case that goods demand increases. I would like to perform one additional adjustment of the LM equation and I would like to insert in the on the right hand side of the LM equation uh, a variable called D0, which is like the autonomous component of money demand. Uh, when we have this autonomous component of money demand on the right hand side of the equation, we can analyze uh, the following story. So what happens if the private households do not trust the commercial banking sector anymore and they are uh, increasing money demand, they want to have money in their pockets or they want to store money under the pillow of the bed and they are going to the banking system and they are trying to get like their money out of the banking system, then we could increase the autonomous component of money demand. And uh, this would affect here the right-hand side of the LM equation. The LM curve will shift to the right in case that the central bank increases money supply or in case that the autonomous component of money demand decreases. Furthermore, the LM curve will shift to the right in case that the goods prices decrease, but this shock will never pop up in our class because we are looking at the ISLM model where we assume that the goods prices are constant so that the goods prices do not change. So the last shock will not pop up. Now it is time to watch a different video. 
So now it's time to watch the complete video of chapter 12. Uh, when you have done that, then you can come back to this video here where we will discuss uh, some very important points which might be highly relevant for your final exam. So I recommend to watch like uh, chapter 12, MenQ first, then come back to this video, but I'll proceed now. So like we said, uh, one shock which can occur is a negative uh, shock which with respect to consumption. The consumers fear that in the future there is a recession, that the consumers fear that in the future they become unemployed and therefore they are cutting back the autonomous component of consumption, which will lead to a new equilibrium in point B. The economy ends up in a recession, so GDP is lower than before. And now the big question is, what kind of medicine can be used by the government in order to get the economy back on track? What kind of medicine can be put on the spoon and uh, will cure uh, this disease that GDP is lower in point B? One possibility is that the government is using government spending and this will shift like the IS curve to the right. In case that we use like the right dose of medicine, it will be the case that uh, the level of GDP in point C will be the same as in the initial situation, so that YA is equal to YC. The level of GDP is the same, but has a structure of GDP changed. What is the structure of GDP? The structure of GDP can be regarded as a kind of uh, cake and like Let's assume that in A, in situation A, in the initial situation, half of the cake is consumed by the private household, a quarter goes to the government, and one quarter goes to the companies in form of investment. So the overall size of the cake, this is the level of G GDP, and uh, the distribution of the cake shows you the structure of GDP. The size of the cake is the same in Y in situation A and in situation C because YA is equal to YC. What about the structure? Investment in A and C is the same because there is no investment shock and the interest rate in A and C are the same. So, hence, investment has not changed at all. What about consumption? Consumption is lower because of the fact that the initial shock was that the private households are decreasing the autonomous component and uh, the piece of the cake which goes to the government is larger because we used an increase in government spending in order to cure like the uh, problem of a recession and the unemployment problem. So here we can clearly see that the structure of GDP has changed because of the fact that um, government spending will take a large, larger piece of the cake, consumption will take a smaller piece of the cake. Let's have a look at another scenario. And in this scenario, we are once more assuming that there is like a negative shock with respect uh, to consumption. We end up in point B. But now it is the case that the central bank is increasing money supply. The LM curve like shifts uh, to the right. There is a new LM curve here and the economy ends up in point C. Uh, the interest rate has changed compared to the initial equilibrium. And therefore, we know that investment will be different in A and C. The level of GDP is the same in A and C. So it is the case that we have used the right amount of medicine so that we can cure the problem of uh, the recession. So the level of GDP is the same. The size of the cake is the same in A and C. 
But what about the structure? So this is once more is the structure of uh, GDP in the initial situation in A. Um, half of the piece of the cake, uh, half of the cake uh, is consumed by the private households, one quarter by the government and one quarter by investment. Now it is the case that government spending is constant because we used monetary policy in order to cure the problem. This led to a reduction of the interest rate. The interest rate is down from A to C and hence investment is up. So also here, the structure of GDP has changed. Uh, a smaller piece of the cake goes to the private households and a larger piece of the cake is invested by the companies. So also here, the structure of GDP has changed. Let's have a look at a third possibility. So once more, initially, we have the negative shock with respect to uh, consumption. We end up in point B. The economy ends up in a recession. GDP is lower than before. Now it is the case that the government is using uh, the tax instrument and the IS curve shifts to the right. We are using the right amount of uh, medicine so that in the end uh, GDP in A is equal to GDP in C. So, like the level of GDP is the same once more. What about the interest rates? Uh, interest rates are the same, so that it seems to be the case that investment has not changed. Uh, let's compare the structure of GDP. Uh, once more, 50% here goes to private households in form of consumption, a quarter to the government and one quarter to investment. In C, it is the case that not only the level of GDP is the same, but also like the structure of GDP is the same. Government spending is the same as before. Investment has not changed because of the fact that the interest rate is the same in A and C. Furthermore, uh, consumption has not changed at all. How is that? We have to th uh, think about it. Let's write down the consumption function once more. In the first step, it is the case that the autonomous component of consumption is reduced and therefore like we have a negative effect on consumption. But then the government is using like the tax instrument. The government is reducing the taxes so that disposable income increases and this has a positive effect on consumption. So like these two effects, like the negative effect on consumption and the positive effect on consumption, they cancel out and in the end, consumption is the same as before. Hence, in case that the government is not only interested in the level of GDP, but also to hold constant, like the structure of GDP, then we have one pro argument for using the tax instrument. When the government uses a tax instrument, the government can hold also the structure of the GDP constant. Uh, this was like the end of my uh, lecture. I hope that this uh, will provide you with the necessary information for the final exam. So like, have a good day. Bye-bye and uh, all the best for the exam and all the best for your career.